Well, good afternoon. I'm, uh, my name is Denis Marceline Little. I am an orthopedic surgeon for small animal, and I am uh, now part of UC Davis uh, faculty. And I am uh, very focused on orthopedic diseases and disability, managing disability, uh, promoting locomotion, protecting locomotion, or recovering locomotion. Okay. Uh, so that's a good question about osteoarthritis because it's so common in dogs. You know, we generally float the number of a dog in five having osteoarthritis, and, and we don't even know if these numbers are super real, but it's basically super common. So if you have, if your dog is an amputee, it's still going to be at high risk of osteoarthritis. Of course, our amputees that are missing a back leg move a lot better and more easily than amputees who are moving, who are missing a front leg. So first, I'm worried about if I have a dog with a single front leg, I'm really worried about its elbow because that's the more uh, uh, common, maybe. Osteoarthritis is seen fairly commonly in both the elbow and the shoulder, but in the shoulder it's uh, more discreet. It's better tolerated. You think about the shoulder, it's used in dogs kind of in the middle of its range, so they don't really have to go fully extended or fully flexed, meaning when they have osteoarthritis, they usually don't stretch their joint to the extreme, which tends to be the more painful thing. It's also a very loose joint, the shoulder relative to the elbow, and loose joints tolerate osteoarthritis better. The real risk is elbow osteoarthritis, and elbow osteoarthritis is very, very uh, common in big dogs. And so you have el elbow osteoarthritis, you're going to be using that joint very close to its full extension, that's going to be hurting, so really you don't want elbow osteoarthritis. A lot of elbow osteoarthritis comes from elbow dysplasia, and that's a bit of a genetic thing, so you could look at the statistics first and see if my dog is in the list of dogs that have uh, commonly have elbow osteoarthritis. So start at the OFA.org and look at elbow statistics, it's available. We also want to do everything we can to slow down or minimize the expression and the progression of osteoarthritis, and we're getting back to our discussion about being lean uh, because being lightweight will greatly slow down the progression of osteoarthritis. We know that from a fa for a fact, for, from lifelong studies. And uh, so elbow osteoarthritis uh, must be slowed down by being lightweight. It's critically important. Um, exercising regularly will keep you strong also, and you have to do it with caution, and it's not easy. So the weight is really the one that you can predict and control the most. So for the back legs, uh, we're in a better situation because dogs uh, walk better when they're missing a back leg than a front leg. The joints we're going to be particularly worried about are going to be the knee or stifle and the hip. And so uh, for the stifle, we also want to know what breed is going to be at risk of cruciate injury. Uh, that's something that's important to discuss. Pay attention to uh, avoid uh, particularly strenuous exercise uh, if you are at risk of a cruciate injury. And also keep an eye on the hip joint, making sure that you don't develop a lot of hip pain from hip dysplasia. Just like for the front leg, we're particularly interested in um, slowing the progression of any problem that's already there, such as uh, you know osteoarthritis in the knee or in the hip. And so we're going to have to keep dogs lean. We're going to have to exercise regularly to keep them strong. Uh, staying on top of it, if we think our dog has a problem, we should seek advice and get objective information as early as possible because problems treated early are going to be, uh, maybe they will be managed the same way, but the recovery will be a lot safer. You can imagine you've had a TPLO and you only have one back leg. The fitter you are and the healthier you are, the, the faster you'll get that episode behind you. If we wait until you can barely walk, then your recovery will become both very dangerous and very challenging, so we want to avoid that. So treat things rapidly, diagnose them. If we are unsure, we seek the help of somebody who can help us be sure we manage things prom promptly and effectively.